Hi there and welcome to this day in history for July 4th. July 4th is the 185th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 186th in leap years, with 180 days remaining to the end of the year. The aphelion, the point in the year when the earth is farthest from the sun, occurs around this date. Today's word is hippocrine. Hippocrine is a noun that means a poetic or literary inspiration. This word comes to us from adaptation of an idea from Greek mythology. Hippocrene was a spring on Mount Helicon said to be created by a stroke of Pegasus' foot. Hippo means horse, of course, and crene means fountain or stream. These words come to us from the Greek language and from Indo-European root words before that. Earliest documented use of the word Hippocrene is 1598. And with that, we're going to start on July 4th, 1054, with the supernova that was observed and noted by several observers and civilizations. It was bright enough to be seen during the day and evident for several months. This supernova is called SN 1054 and is now part of the Crab Nebula. The United States Military Academy opened at West Point, New York on July 4th, 1802. The Louisiana Purchase was announced to the U.S. people on July 4, 1803. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, respectively the second and third presidents of the United States, died on the same day, July 4, 1826, on the 50th anniversary of the adoption of the United States Declaration of Independence. Unaware that Jefferson had died earlier in the day, Adams' last words were, Thomas Jefferson survives. I guess he found out when he got to the other side. This is the birthday of American songwriter and composer Stephen Foster, born July 4th, 1826. He wrote such songs as Oh Susanna, Camp Town Races, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, and more. Stephen Foster lived to the age of 37. Slavery was abolished in the state of New York on July 4th, 1827. Samuel Francis Smith wrote My Country Tis of Thee for the Boston, Massachusetts July 4th festivities in 1831. The first long distance railway known as the Grand Junction Railway opened between Birmingham and Liverpool, England on July 4th, 1837. The Iowa Territory was organized on July 4th, 1838. On July 4, 1845, Henry David Thoreau moved into a small cabin on Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts. The creative result of his time there, Walden, has become a touchstone of the environmental movement. The first edition of Walt Whitman's book of poems, Leaves of Grass, was published in Brooklyn, New York on July 4, 1855. On July 4, 1862, Lewis Carroll, told a little girl named Alice Liddell a story that would grow into Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and its sequels. This is the birthday of American lawyer and politician and 30th President of the United States, Calvin Coolidge, born July 4, 1872. He lived to the age of 60. The Tuskegee Institute opened in Alabama on July 4, 1881. This is the birthday of American sculptor, cartoonist, and engineer Rube Goldberg, born July 4th, 1883. He's best known for his popular cartoons that showed complicated gadgets performing simple tasks in indirect and convoluted ways. <laughs> These cartoons led to the expression Rube Goldberg machines, which has then led to the actual creation of such machines. They're very entertaining to watch, Rube Goldberg machines. Rube Goldberg lived to the age of 87. This is the birthday of American playwright and screenwriter Neil Simon, born July 4th, 1927. He wrote dozens, if not hundreds, of scripts over the course of his career. The one that always pops to mind for me is The Odd Couple. <laughs> he lived to the age of 91. On July 4, 1934, a man named Leo Zillard patented the chain reaction design that would later be used in the atomic bomb. 
Interestingly, that patent for the chain reaction design was issued on the same day that Marie Curie died. She was fascinated by the idea of x-rays, which William Rentgen had discovered in 1895. She studied and discovered radioactive elements. She developed aplastic anemia due to long-term exposure to radiation and died on July 4, 1934. All her papers, notes, and even her home cookbook are radioactive and considered too dangerous to handle. They're kept in lead-lined boxes now. Marie Curie was 66 when she passed away. This is the birthday of American singer, songwriter, and producer Bill Withers, born July 4, 1938. He wrote a number of popular and award-winning songs, including Ain't No Sunshine, Just the Two of Us, and Lean On Me, to name a few. Bill Withers lived to the age of 81. On July 4, 1939, Lou Gehrig announced to a crowd in Yankee Stadium that he considered himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth, and also announced his retirement from Major League Baseball. He had recently been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which has since come to be known as Luke Eric's disease. He passed away less than two years later. And hey, who's a Bob Ross fan? He was an American painter, art instructor, and television host. Had a show on PBS called The Joy of Painting, episodes of which can still be found out there on the internet, including YouTube. Fans of his might be surprised, as I was, to learn that he'd been a master sergeant in the military in positions that required him to be the guy who makes you scrub the latrine, the guy who makes you make your bed, the guy who screams at you for being late to work. Russ decided that if he ever got out of the Army, he would never yell or raise his voice again. <laughs> his personal gentle speaking style on the joy of painting is so iconic that his name is used as an example to describe people who speak in a quiet, calming voice. I've seen various people described as the Bob Ross of homesteading, or the Bob Ross of polymer clay, or the Bob Ross of resin, for example. As much as we love Bob Ross, we mention him today because it is on this day, July 4th, 1995, that he passed away due to complications from lymphoma. He was 52. And I think that's going to do it for us today. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Feel free to give it a like. Did I already say that? <laughs> ah, there we go. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. Images are retrieved from Bing Images, either public domain or licensed free to use and share. I think the correct terminology is free to share and use. Our lovely outro music is Divine Life Society by Jesse Gallagher from YouTube Music Library, and there's a link to his channel in the show notes. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. This is also the birthday of my baby sister. My baby sister. When she was little, we'd go to the fireworks shows and we'd tell her this was for her. This was all for her. And it kind of is. She's quite a gal. <laughs> Happy birthday, baby sister. <laughs>